Welcome to Rock of Ages. My name is Doug. I'm one of the elders of the church. I'm standing out here in my backyard. It's beautiful weather. It's a beautiful day. It's summer's kind of officially started and kind of reminded this morning that we have a lot to be thankful for. Um, the last three months have been uh, very challenging for all of us with the virus and with everything that that has meant. But it is good to know even this morning that God is in control. I want to begin this morning with a call to worship. I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17. And I'm reading this from the Message Translation. Whenever though they turn to face God as Moses did, God removes the veil and there they are, face to face. They suddenly recognize that God is a living, personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're free of it, all of us, nothing between us and God. Our face is shining with the brightness of his face. And so we are transfigured, much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for who you are and for what you do for us, what you have done for us, and what you will always do for us. And Lord, as we, even this morning, are uh, witnessing the brightness of your Son, the Sun in the sky, we also want to think about the brightness of your Son, Jesus, and what that brightness has done for us. And Lord, there have been many things in our lives uh, in this past few months that have been challenging, that have been distracting. They may have even created some worry and some anxiety and some fear in us, Lord. And we just want to give all that to you this morning. We recognize that you have blessed us individually. We recognize that you've blessed our congregation. And for that, we are grateful and we are thankful. And Lord, if, if there's anything holding any person back, any they're being held captive by anything, we just ask that that this be laid before you and that you would just grant freedom for any of those people from any issues. And we know that through the power of your Holy Spirit, that those issues can be gone. So Lord, just be with all aspects of the service this morning. Be with the, the two women that are sharing their faith stories this morning. We just uh, say thank you for, for them doing that work in advance. And we pray that their stories would be a blessing this morning to all those who can hear it. And we ask that in your name. Amen. So it is Story Sunday, and today you're going to be hearing from two of the young women in our church, Amy Carlson and Sarah Kortz, and I, I know you're going to enjoy their stories. So before we get to that, I just want to forecast a little bit about what July is going to look like. I've mentioned this in a couple service videos, but I thought it'd be a good reminder. So we have a summer series in July called Where Are They Now? And we are going to be featuring uh, sermons and brief video greetings from four of our previous pastors. So the first Sunday in July, you're going to be hearing from Bob Hagestad. And actually, Bob and Jan were pastors of our church. They were youth pastors of our church way back when I was still in high school, which is a long time ago. And so it's going to be great to hear from them again. So that'll be the first Sunday in July. And then the second Sunday in July, we're going to be hearing from Harold and Joyce Rust. And again, uh, they, they, had a, they had a great um, time of ministry when they were with us at Rock of Ages. So we look forward to that the second Sunday in July. The third Sunday in July, you're going to be hearing a message and a greeting from Pastor Brian Smith, who has recently uh, retired from his work and his ministry in Frontier. So we just want to say a big congratulations to Brian uh, on your time serving churches. And we do hope that you'll enjoy your retirement uh, as you relocate to Regina, where I think a lot of your family, your kids and grandkids are now residing. And then the fourth Sunday in July, we're going to be hearing from Brian and Val Tisdall. And I know several of us have been uh, uh, watching what's happening uh, with their church in Strasbourg. They've got parking lot services and, and uh, there was one sermon that Brian Tisdall did inside the walls of a 
of a, I think it was a grain bin and uh, they've been doing all kinds of creative things and so we look forward to hearing from Brian and Val the little greeting and then Brian bringing the sermon the last Sunday in July and then if I go uh, a little bit ahead into the first Sunday in August our pastor Jean and Carolyn Mao who are the interim pastor for Rock of Ages we're going to be hearing a message uh, and likely a greeting from the two of them but we'll be hearing our first sermon from Pastor Gene Mao that first Sunday in August. So lots to look forward to and we know that summer is a time when people tend to maybe go to their vacation spots or they travel a little bit although with COVID restrictions I think travel is restricted but we know it often is a time when people um, get away a little bit and maybe they're not physically in Saskatoon but again the beauty of the pivot that we've made now with uh, our Facebook group and with our YouTube channel is you can count on a, a service from Rock of Ages every one of those Sundays in July and in August. So again, lots of us uh, have been involved in, in this pivot, moving the services to uh, video format, and uh, we just want to say thank you to everyone that's been involved. We will be moving in August uh, to physically meeting in the church. There'll be more details shared via email about that in the coming weeks. Um, but we want to do that carefully and we want to do that safely. And I know Carolyn Bacowie and our Finance and Trustee Committee and Kenton Claussen and, and several others have been involved already in sort of setting up some guidelines so that we can make that physical meeting transition back into our church, our physical church, Rock of Ages, a successful one. So again, there'll be more details coming about that. And in uh, mid to late August, we will be meeting physically in our church, but we will also be broadcasting our services live, likely through our Facebook group channel that people have been subscribing to. And so again, that's another technological move that we need to make as a church, but we look forward to doing that. We are confident as elders and as leaders in the church that the online presence that we have um, changed to in the last few months, we will not lose that presence. We will continue that even though we will be also physically meeting. So that's enough about the announcements. Just a quick reminder too about our offerings. Um, I was just talking to Don Olson, our treasurer here just earlier this week. And Don just has been awesome to handle all of these e-transfers and online payments and taking pictures of checks with her phone. And if, if it's possible to be done technologically, Don has learned how to do it. And Don, we just I just wanna say a particular thanks to you for all the work you've done in these past few months in helping our church move to that online giving format. Thank you to those that have been doing the online giving faithfully. And we just, even though you're gonna be moving into your summer mode and, and people tend to maybe sort of um, step back a little bit physically and maybe from uh, your house in Saskatoon and you go to maybe uh, you go camping or you go to your other vacation spots, we just, uh, we just pray that your online giving will continue as we anticipate um, not only the the uh, start of Jean and Carolyn Mao as our interim pastors, but we also anticipate preschool with Margie starting and all those things starting up again. And we know that those things have their own budgets and costs that come with them. And so we just, uh, we just want you to pray about um, if you haven't made that transition to online giving, I can, I can tell you quite confidently that we likely will not be passing offering plates physically even when we return to physically meeting in the church so if that's still something you've been thinking about I know Don uh, would be uh, more than willing to help you make that transition so that's enough about the announcements uh, we are going to now move to our faith and testimony stories it's story Sunday we've been doing this one Sunday a month since uh, February and it has been a blessing to hear from so many of our women in our congregation and as I had shared Last Sunday, I believe, we will be continuing with Story Sundays one Sunday a month, and we will be um, including men in our faith stories and testimonies. So uh, that's something to look forward to when we return in uh, late August and early September. So I would like you to sit back and enjoy and listen carefully to the faith stories of first Amy Carlson and then Sarah Quartz. I can't really express just how much I have been dreading this. Writing it has been so agonizing. And for months, I flat out don't 
want to be doing this. And it's not about the sharing. I'm really an open book and I'm fine with it. It's not that I'm nervous or worried about what people will think. I think it's because it's forcing me to reflect on myself. And that is such a daunting task. You see right now, I'm stuck in a rut. I think one of the problems is that I want a relationship with God for nothing. I want to put no time in. I want to get all of the rewards. But it's not really working all that great, because who knew? That's not how it works. If I'm putting no effort in, no time, no motion or dedication in, I need to be aware that that's what I'm going to get out. I'm going to get nothing especially when it comes to feelings of personal commitment and relationship. It's kind of like marriage that way. We all want a marriage that just works, you know? One that we don't really need to work on at all, and all the pieces just naturally fit. Unfortunately, those of you who are married know that that's not at all how it works. Though, let's be real, at times we secretly wish that it definitely worked exactly like that. This year has been really quite hard on my family and it's caused me to realize that my relationship with the Lord isn't as deep as I wish it to be. In September we had our second amazing daughter Spensa and just as we got used to having an extra little one around in November, when our baby was two months old, my husband Derek got viral meningitis and had to be hospitalized. He eventually did recover, but it took months and it was not until the new year that he was able to work again. Things went well for about a month, and then at the tail end of January, Aria, our then two-year-old, got sick. Um, she was lethargic and not herself at all. She had blotchy skin and she was blistering everywhere, and she screamed as soon as you touched her. She needed to be hospitalized as well for a week. She had randomly got a staph skin infection, and basically the top layer of her skin detached and boiled off. It was incredibly painful and so hard on her little body. She also recovered. And then just when things were getting back to normal, COVID hit. Since then, my father has been found to have cancer. He's gotten surgery. He's been hospitalized for over a month and is just now doing a little bit better. I have had the worst year. But even then, God has best blessed me, uh, specifically with Spensa. She has these smiles and this calming temperament that just has gotten me through so much. <laughs> um, anyway, with all this happening in my life, I've really put my relationship with God on the back burner. I haven't been actively seeking His will. I haven't been reading His word. I haven't been praying or listening to Him like I should. And yet, here I am doing this. You know the feeling that you get when you know God is speaking to you? When you feel your heart beat faster and you need to say something or you just might explode? Well, that's me. I've ignored this feeling a few times in the past. Some of my greatest regrets are hearing God and not listening. One time it was due to worrying about what my peers would think of me, and another time it was so I could stay in a relationship that I knew was not honoring to God. I regret both acts of defiance, acts of not listening to God when I knew there would be consequences, so very much. So I've learned to listen, especially when I've been hit over the head with signs to stand up and get my act together. Jesus kept me up all night thinking about speaking. It was a real my way or the highway kind of moment. So in a step of obedience, one that I really, really don't want to take, here I am speaking to you.
Jesus knows me. He knows me inside and out. He knows I get into a pattern of complacency where I let my guard down and I let the world and its idols in. Times where I don't actively pursue a personal relationship with him. It is not a good cycle, but he keeps pulling me back to him. Sometimes like now, when I really don't feel like putting in the effort, he needs to work really hard to get me to pay attention. And this is why I'm here sharing with you today because God knows that I need the challenge of facing myself and a fresh push to focus on him. And at the very least, if I again press the spiritual snooze button on my alarm clock, then maybe it will be used to wake up someone else. I am definitely leveraging my discomfort for you. And I really hope and pray that you listen to whatever Jesus is calling you to do. God knows that I am not some stellar Christian. I am not the young person who has gone on mission trips, who has fed and clothed the homeless. I'm not the girl who stayed up all night praying or who has even gone to Bible school. I am really curious why he has me doing this sharing when I'm not even really following him all that well. I by no means have stopped following him. And if we're thinking of it as a map, I'm still going in his general direction, but I'm meandering and taking my own sweet time for, to get from point A to point B. <sighs> but then I look in the Bible. He seems to have decided on choosing people who are flawed to do his work. He thrives on turning lives around to look at him and to bring him glory. That's what I want to do. I want to bring Jesus glory by my words and my humility. So even though I am far from what I should be, he's still working in me and molding me like potter's clay. So here I am in a state of what Andy Stanley calls devotion without motion. I'll let that one sink in. Devotion without motion. This is my current st struggle. I do not struggle with having faith. I have so many instances in my life that show me that God is with me all the time. I can see him in times that would have broken me. This leads me to a little background on me. I was born in British Columbia to an amazing family. I was youngest, excuse me, I was the youngest of four and I was the only girl. We had a dairy farm in the lower mainland, but decided to move and had more space in Alberta, and then we moved to Saskatchewan. Within a year of moving to Saskatchewan, I could tell something was different with the faith. It was closer, more personal. And what started out as a way for me to escape chores in the evening and to gain a bit more freedom, developed into a really great faith base. Faith has always come easy for me. Even in the really tough times for my family, I felt God present. Our family endured a devastating loss when my brother was run over at a church hayride event. He lost his life at 15 and I was 10. Seeing that could have easily left me bitter towards God but somehow it brought me closer to understanding his love for me and that it never wavers. It's constant and unchanging regardless of my actions or at times like now, lack of action. There have been other major instances in my life when I have felt the power of God's love and I am so thankful that faith through those tough times came so easily to me. With all the things that have happened this last year, I have really needed my strong resolve in the power of Jesus and his love to lean on. Currently, I am 100% leaning on his grace. My faith has no works. There is no fruit for my labor because I am being lazy about my relationship with God and putting 
no work in at all. James 2.17 says, Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. I am feeling spiritually dead. I am not in a state of questioning God's existence. That is not my struggle. I know He exists. I know He loves me, even now. My struggle is to put my faith in motion. As James puts it, to have faith and works. And if you're feeling like me, I hope you will recognize your lack of motion in your devotion. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And I hope this bothers you until you do something. Take this as your call to action. That's what I'm choosing to do now. I will need to give some things in my life to Jesus. Things like my worship to the world of Netflix or Facebook. All the time that is being wasted there that I could be using to cultivate a deeper relationship with God. It's a bit embarrassing to think about just how much time it is. And it will be hard and uncomfortable to get up, give up this mindlessness for intentionality. But I will need to make some changes to get spiritual growth to happen. I will need to pray while I cook rather than watch Netflix. I will need to put Bible reading in the place of Facebook surfing. And things like tithing our money instead of spending it on things we don't really need. I will need to strive to listen to brilliant teachers like Andy Stanley while I work rather than letting my thoughts drift to things of the world that I'm missing. It will be a very long process. <sighs> but I know it's what God wants for me. Jesus knows me and he sees that my devotion is currently without any motion. And when that happens, it's only good for me. I'm not leveraging my faith or my time or any part of my life for others or for the kingdom. No one benefits from my current faith except for me. And even then, I'm not getting all that I can from it. God desires relationship because he has so much more to show and give us than an escape pass from hell. And right now, that's what I'm getting from grace, my escape pass. That's all I'm using when I could be getting relationship and the fruits of the spirit, things like added compassion, patience, self-control, contentment. It sounds so good and it's something I need, and the change really needs to start now for me. I know this is supposed to be a message of hope, and I mean, it kind of is. I hope that the future is brighter than the past. I hope that my mindset or yours will shift. I hope that you will reflect on your own life and maybe see what God is asking you to do. My words are like paint. If you don't apply it, it doesn't do any good. I don't know. Are you willing to put motion in your devotion? I know I sure need to. And this, this is just the first baby step. God bless you on your journey. Good morning, Rock of Ages Church. For those of you who don't know, my name is Sarah Quartz. My husband and I have been attending Rock of Ages for about six years. And when Doug asked me to do this, before that even, when they started doing these her stories, I knew, I just had this feeling that at some point in the future, it's gonna come to me. I'm gonna be asked to do this and I don't want to. So sure enough, Doug phoned and left me a voicemail asking me to do this and I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to. But God was kind of like, no, that's really not a good enough excuse. So I was like, okay, I have to call and say, yeah, I'll do it. I then figure out what to talk about. So I've got some stuff written down here. I've been really struggling to write anything. And so 
I've been reading the Bible, I've been praying, I've been Googling, and it all comes back to one verse. I keep focusing on this one verse. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And so I just keep going back to that. And it just... I keep thinking about a few stories and a few things that have happened. And I'm like, okay, this is what I need to share. So... For those of you that do kind of know me, for those of you that don't, I grew up in a Christian house. I've gone to church my entire life. I have really never done anything bad, so to speak. I've always felt like I don't have a testimony to share because my life is pretty normal. And I'm pretty blessed. And I don't want people to I don't know how to say it. I don't want people to not like me and think I'm so high and mighty because I've lived a blessed life. That's not it. I've lived a blessed life because God has chosen that. I mean, I've had struggles, but not to the same degree. Not to, I, haven't had the, I haven't experienced the same loss as others have. And I'm so grateful for that. Growing up Christian was, it wasn't a bad thing in the small town I grew up in. Youth was the cool place to go. Everybody went, so, I mean, it was pretty easy. Uh, I went to Bethany Bible College and that's where I met Neil. And then we got married and we were church shopping. We were hopping from church to church trying to find something that was the right fit. But nothing was the right fit. And um, we kind of gave up looking for a little bit. My work, I didn't have Sundays off. And then I could kind of feel this nudging from God saying, you need Christian community. You need to get back on track. I never stopped believing in God. I just stopped caring about the Christian community, caring about who I surrounded myself with. And I remember talking to Neil about it one evening and trying to name off our Christian friends and not the ones that say they're Christians but don't really live their life as if they are, the actual true unashamed Christians and we struggled to name any friends that fit that category. And so we were like, okay, I th we really need to do something about this. So I came home from work one night and Neil had found a Kijiji ad for a college and career group. It worked with my work schedule, being that it was on Wednesday nights. And all the churches that we had gone to, we had just tried going Sunday morning. So we thought going to a smaller group would be a good way to take that leap to go ahead and do it. Well, I, I had reservations. I didn't want to do it. It was Kijiji. There's a lot of weirdos. And like, who's advertising on Kijiji? Just weirdos in my view. That sounds horrible. For the record, I have posted on Kijiji too. I could kind of see, like, this was important to him. And so this was one of those times in marriage that I was going to compromise. That's fine. So we went. And, I mean, I was hooked. I really only regretted that we didn't find that Kijiji ad sooner. It changed my life. Okay, I've been sitting here writing stuff out and every time I write stuff out I end up crying and I just knew that I'd cry at some point during this. But that's okay. If there's a single decision in my life that has had 
such an immense impact. It's that one. Telling Neil that, yes, we'll go to this college and career group. We'll try it because it's important to you. I'll try it. It has changed my life. I was prepared. So, of course, Amy was the weirdo on the other end of that ad. It was a perfect fit right from the start. Everybody was so welcoming. It seemed so easy. And so going back to the verse, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. I took a bit of a leap there. I did not want to go to this group, but I was like, okay, for Neil, I'll go. And okay, God, I'll go. I'll give it a try. I took a little bit of a leap of faith and I stepped out of my comfort zone. Just a small thing, but with huge impact on my life. So for the last six years, I have never felt more connected to God and more connected to an actual Christian community. I want to volunteer, I want to volunteer for things. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to sit on the sidelines and just show up Sunday. So I keep pushing myself to do more and to do more. And that leads to doing this even. I didn't want to do this video, but I didn't really have a reason not to. And I could kind of feel that God wasn't going to be happy with that. So I decided, yes, I will do this without knowing what I'm going to share. And it made me think of Jonah and how when he was supposed to go to Nineveh, he ran in the opposite direction. And I thought, I could run in the opposite direction. I remember years ago, before Neil and I found church, I was kind of not running in the opposite direction, but I wasn't going anywhere, which is kind of the same thing as going in the opposite direction. So I was like, Ugh, instead of fighting this, instead of pushing back, I'll just agree to it. It's a lot easier in the long run. And so I reread Jonah. I mean, it's very short, easy to reread. Re and I realized there's only one line that he says to the Ninevites once he finally agrees and goes. All he says is 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. It's one line. And yet the Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. So I don't have to be poetic. I don't have to have it all written down. I can be like Jonah and just say the one line. Tell the one story. Share just a little bit and God will use it for good. But I just have to take that first step and that first leap and I have to trust him. does not make us timid, and I don't want to be timid anymore. But he gives us power, love, and self-discipline. I want God's power. I want to proclaim his glory loud and clear. I want to feel his love and show his love to those that need it. And I want the self-discipline to delve into his word surround myself with the community that will support me. I want the self-discipline to stay on the right track in following him. That being said, once you get into a new sort of comfort zone, God's going to keep pushing you. So you take one leap. Six years ago, I took a leap and agreed to go to this college and career group. 
recently I took a leap and just straight out asked Allison if she would be my mentor and have coffee with me. We met up and we realized we have so much in common and I am so excited to talk to her, to learn from her, to just share with her. It's gonna be amazing. And now I took this leap of just going ahead and sharing a little bit about myself. Knowing that I was gonna end up crying. So whatever little things you think might just be little things, might not be. They might be huge things. And when you are in that comfort zone and you take a little leap and you hit a new comfort zone, keep listening to God, keep going. He's going to continue to push you because he has great plans for you. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to actually seeing everybody in person once we're actually able to meet again at church. I miss Sunday mornings. I miss sending Evan off to the nursery. I miss all the kids running around as if it's just home. I miss the community, but I'm so thankful because I know I still have it even without the building. I wish you all a very great Sunday. Bye-bye. Thanks so much, Amy and Sarah, for sharing your testimonies. And, and we know it's not an easy thing to do, and yet we know it's such a blessing. It, not only has it blessed you by being able to tell your story, but I know it's blessed many others in just hearing your story. So thank you for, as Sarah so eloquently put it, Thank you for taking that step and for being a little bit vulnerable and being willing to share what God and what Jesus have done in your lives. One final reminder to everybody. I know there have been a few people over the last few months that may or may not have been receiving emails from the church. I know that there's been some work done at our church recently with SASTEL and moving some lines, etc. And I believe in my conversation with Kalina, our church secretary, I think all those issues are resolved. However, if for any reason you have not been receiving an email from our church, I just want to remind everybody again this morning, our church email address is therock at sastel.net, therock at sastel.net. Please send an email to this if you've been having some issues and haven't been receiving regular communication, and I, I know Kalina will respond and we will get those things uh, resolved. As we conclude this morning, um, we just ask that you uh, enjoy your uh, day, enjoy uh, your summertime, enjoy some time with family, continue to listen carefully to the Saskatchewan Health guidelines in terms of uh, social and physical distancing. We want everyone to be safe. And again, we look forward to our summer, summer series, Where Are They Now?, starting next Sunday. I'll say an early Happy Canada Day to everybody, and we will see you all soon.